Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Excel lesson. Uh, this is going to be lesson three in the Introduction to Excel series. In this lesson, we're kind of bringing together everything we learned kind of more in lesson one um, with cell referencing and formulas. And then we're going to add in the importance of order of operations. Uh, before we get started, I highly recommend that you go to the link in the description and you download the Excel spreadsheet to follow along. Now, when you click that link, you'll notice that it opens up to a Google Sheet. And this is all fine and lovely. If you don't have Excel, this works fine. Um, but uh, we are going to be actually using Excel here. So I highly recommend that if you do have an Excel subscription that you download the Excel. Um, go ahead and click File. Hover over download and click on Microsoft Excel to download an Excel file. Again, file, download and click on Microsoft Excel. We will be working on the third tab. Once you have your Excel file open, go ahead and click enable editing at the yellow bar at the top. And then at the bottom, we are going to move to lesson three, order of operations. Let's scroll in a bit here. All right. So in this lesson, lesson, it's almost like a little checkpoint. We're going to be practicing our skills with cell referencing and formulas, but there's going to be an extra piece thrown in here, which is understanding the order of operations when we are doing these formulas. So you might remember back in the day you learned about PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Um, so essentially this would tell you what the order of operations is for a mathematical equation, right? Or a mathematical formula. So here if we see this order of operations, we know that parentheses come first. This is going to be very important. Next is exponents. We don't usually deal too much with exponents in accountants and accounting, but for those of you who are here from other places, it's important to know. Multiplication and division. Remember, those are done together in the same group. And then addition and subtraction. So when we go down to this practice scenario here, and I'll kind of show you why this order of operations is so important through this example. So when we're taking a look here, we are given a formula. Uh, for those of you who have taken a little bit of accounting, you may know this formula might be familiar to you. Uh, depreciation per year is cost minus residual value divided by estimated useful life. So for those of you who have taken accounting, you'll see that that is the straight line depreciation formula. And you'll notice that we have these cells here, which give us the cost and the residual value as well as the estimated useful life. Now, if we follow this formula, let's say that your boss gives you these inputs and they say, I want you to create a spreadsheet that will automatically calculate the depreciation per year. Now in this cell, let's go ahead and calculate that depreciation per year. Even if you don't know any accounting, we're just going to be following this formula piece by piece. So first thing we need is the cost. We know that the cost is here in cell F18. So let's click on the cost. Minus residual value. Our residual value is right here. So let's take that 50,000. And then it's telling us divided by estimated useful life. So now we have to divide it by the estimated useful life. So let's see what happens when we click enter for this formula. For those of you who have taken accounting, you know that um, $440,000 in depreciation for one year, it doesn't sound right. There's something off with this formula. And the issue here is if you notice the way that this was set up for this particular formula, they want us to find the cost minus the residual value first, and then they want us to divide it by the estimated useful life. However, the way we put it in, there's a bit of an issue. We have subtraction and we have division. And if we look at our order of operations, division is done before subtraction. 
So what they're trying to do in this formula, what Excel thinks you're trying to do is take 50,000 and divide it by five. So that would give us what, 10,000? And then take 450,000 and divide it by 10,000, which we know that does not work. Or sorry, minus it from the 450,000. So we know that would not work because technically what we want this to do is we want it to minus the residual value from the cost first and then go ahead and divide it by the five years. So how would we fix our formula? Well, we can use parentheses and that's where those parentheses come in handy. So let's put our subtraction in parentheses. And now you'll notice we have the cost minus residual value happening first and then that result should be divided by five. So this is why order of operations is so important when you are working in Excel, because otherwise you have a beautifully written formula with one exception, you are missing those parentheses. And that would be correct. $80,000 would be the depreciation per year. Let's try it with uh, this one here. Practice scenario 3B. So they give us a formula, which is the rate of change formula. They want to basically know how much our cash increased or decreased from year one to year two. And this is our formula. Year two minus year one divided by year one. And again, we're going to run into that same issue very much like before. Our subtraction is in the numerator, but it's going to try to take these last two first and then it's going to try to subtract it from year two so let's just put it in the way it's shown year two minus year one divided by year one we know that's not right that's definitely not working is it so what we're going to have to do is just like before put that numerator in parentheses. That way the system knows I want you to take 40,000 minus 50,000. And then from that result, divide it by the 50,000. So what's the rate of change in cash? Well, uh, if we're going ahead and we're just kind of checking ourselves, we see that cash did go down. So it should be a negative effect. And remember, when we're dealing with this rate of change, it's technically a percentage. So as a decimal, we're seeing that there is a 0.2 or a 20% decline in cash between the two years. Now, here's the issue. I don't want it to be 0.2. I don't want it shown as a decimal. So how would we turn this into a percentage? So we're going to reformat this cell, D39, as a percentage. And the way we do this is very similar to how we did in our previous lessons uh, when we were changing our decimals. So if we go up to our number section on our home tab, these were our decimals from before. If you move over, you'll see that there's a percentage sign here. So I wanna change this to a percentage. And now you'll see, okay, I can see cash decreased by 20% this year. And that's it for lesson three. So please make sure that you remember your please excuse my dear Aunt Sally rules, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, and addition and subtraction. And then uh, whenever you're going through these formulas, if something doesn't look right, it might be that something needs parentheses. So always be cautious. Okay. So uh, keep up the great work. And until next time, happy studying. Good work.